Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. My name is The Frenzy Gamer and today I will be going over the Wizard 101's Summer 2019 update. Currently it's still on test realm so I wouldn't know 100% the final product will be once it comes to test realm but for the most part it looks like we got everything we need to know for what's on test realm that will be possibly coming to live realm so essentially this is going to be a different type of style video where i just quickly go over the things that are within test realm that will possibly be in live realm and also give my first impressions along with you know some suggestions to improve some of these things but without further ado let's get started with today's video for those who are wondering my overall opinions of wizard 101's 2019 summer update i think that it's okay it's definitely not the best compared to many other summer updates out there since Wizard 101's beginnings. And also, it was the update that had lots of hype for rumors, not necessarily confirmed things. So essentially those rumors were a PvP update, which never happened, or at least a level 130 dungeon, which also didn't happen. And people were very disappointed from the beginning. Not to mention, from the beginning, we were all disappointed from the lack of content that was out there. However, there are a few special gems which I will discuss in today's video. And for starters, we have, for the general updates, a complete Wizard City revamp. So, essentially, they revamped Crab Alley, which is the last area that needed to be revamped for a complete Wizard City revamp. All HD, all new textures, new everything. And I have to say, um, I actually really like uh, the way Crab Alley looks right now. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful as you see in the background, you know, just me roaming around looking at the different things within Crab Alley. You can see that there's a lot more life. Obviously, they added a little bit more aquatic life. Obviously, they added a little more textures to that aquatic life. And not to mention, they even added some jellyfish, which is actually my personal favorite. You know, just jellyfish, you know, just roaming around the area. And it just it's just a nice touch. You know, that's all I have to say. It's a very nice touch. Obviously, the plant life makes it look a lot more vibrant. The whole world, city in the air in general is just very vibrant, which I absolutely adore. The other thing that we have is the advanced quick sew. So this is actually the other thing that we didn't really ask for, but we appreciate it 100%. And if you don't appreciate it, you're crazy. Because essentially what this does is that this now allows you to sell some pets and crowns items. We normally have this one issue, especially for those who love to open lots of packs like I do because obviously I do pack review. The main issue we tend to have is that sometimes we are given way too many crowns items and most of these crowns items are also house items, making it hard for us to clear our, our backpack space just to open more packs because of the fact that there's house items that are considered crowns items and there's no other way of selling them except feeding them to your pet, which takes a very long period of time. So with this, it makes it easier for a lot of people to clean their backpacks. And also the other good thing about it is that at the end, once you finish everything you need to do for starting your quick sell, it will give you a visual as to what you're selling, what are the things you're selling as in like, you know, furniture, reagents, uh, crowns, items, pets. And it will also tell you the final amount of gold that you will be receiving from quick selling all those items. Another good thing is that they also give you some warnings beforehand so you can actually make sure that, okay, maybe I might not want to sell some crowns items or I might not want to sell some pets or maybe want, I might want to double check. The thing that this does um, overall is that it makes the lock item that, you know, wizards tend to use to prevent, you know, certain things from being sold become a lot more important because now there could be times where you could accidentally sell something that you probably didn't want to sell because remember you can sell crowns items and you can also sell pets as well so if it was a pet you were working on for a while you gotta be extra careful this time but overall i have to say this is really good the next thing is the decathlons and there's really not much to say but other than they just added a few more decathlon schools. They added the balance one, the myth one, the life in storm. However, there is rumors of some spoilers from the ammo plex that there's actually going to be 30 floors in any of these decathlon levels. And at the last level, you're going to be going against your own professors, which is actually very neat. And hopefully the loot gets even better and we can also craft better stuff. But that remains to be seen. Again, just a spoiler kind of a rumor to this point because it's not really necessarily finalized yet and the last thing for general updates is that we have harold argelstein uh, argelston 
Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> Who is now selling some new treasure cards, including some school traps, nature's wrath, and more like, you know, cards like Blizzard. And this is probably just for the decathlon event so that, you know, free to play players can actually have access to certain spells that probably might be in other worlds that you probably don't have access to in Wizard City, which, I mean, I could say is pretty decent. So, where do I begin when it comes to the first time user experience, or F2 for short? Well, I have to say that this actually has to be one of my favorite things of this update. They basically just made a new and improved version of the tutorial for newer players, and I have to say they did far beyond just improving the tutorial. Essentially, new players get a new healing spell called Heartbeat, and they also have an accuracy buff through their wand which can help them in many battles. Not to mention, they even went out their way to actually change some of the scenery uh, to show that, you know, Rattlebones is a really huge threat and also some amazing music. I have to say, this honestly has to be one of the most beautiful yet epic things I have ever seen from, you know, Kings Owl themselves for Wizard 101. It makes Rattlebones like seem to be compared to Malister in terms of hype because the music just goes so well with, you know, the threat that's going to be amongst you and I have to say it's just amazing overall. Abby Doodle was also a really nice touch. I actually liked her character. She's very quirky and you know very talkative which I could definitely relate to both of those things in a way and she just shows you around the world of Wizard City you know showing you you know where you can buy your stuff you know certain things that you can do within Wizard City and so much more. So Honestly, overall, I have to say this definitely is a very, very good part of the update. Possibly my most favorite thing about this summer 2019 update definitely has to be the new Beast Moon Hunts event. For those who don't know it, it's a team-oriented event where teams of six capture or defend battle rings of the sun, moon, star, eye, and the most important one being the spiral. There are a total of 10 polymorphs to play as, each with their own unique abilities and purposes. For example, the fire elves and the rat thieves are actually very good for capturing areas because of the fact that they're actually really fast in speed, and on the other hand, you know, polymorphs such as the Colossus or even the Croco Mummy are a little bit more in towards of support and stalling because of their really good defensive stats. This honestly reminds me of a little bit more of a smaller scale type of MOBA such as League of Legends or even Smite, but in the terms of the fact that instead of just capturing areas as the main focus, it's essentially to get as much points as possible by either defeating or even capturing errors or even a little bit of both. And I have to say that this mode definitely has lots of depth and not just the game mode by itself. There's actually more things you can do with this event than just play the game mode. You can actually craft some gear uh, while using Lunar Coins, which is the currency for this kind of event. And... You can also even use Lunar Coins to upgrade your Polymorphs for this event, giving them better spells by leveling them up, or even uh, raise the amount of cards they get with upgrading their tiers. And I have to say, there's lots of depth that was actually added to this game mode overall. I really do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun, I have to say. My personal favorite being the Wrath Thief because of how powerful he is, even though he has weaker amounts of health compared to most people, he can definitely pack a punch and have minions with you. Even though the minions don't really attack, they're actually really good at weaknesses the enemy, which could be very good overall. Even though I have lots of praise for this event, this definitely has to have a little bit of improvements overall so that the event could be a lot better. For starters, it needs to have a better tutorial. One of the things that I didn't like about this event is how confusing it really was at first until you play a few games. I feel like in order to make newer players understand the game mode a little bit better is that instead of having a dialogue type of tutorial where they just explain you everything, why not have a hands-on type of tutorial like games that, you know, tend to have this like League of Legends or even Smite have a hands-on tutorial where you just select your hero or they just give you a random hero, in this case polymorphs, and you basically play a game but the 
there's a tutorial uh, guiding you through the whole game so you can understand at least the basics for this mode. This will basically allow players to understand the game mode a little bit faster and, or at least learn the basics and later on learn a little bit more of the advanced stuff as they play during the game, making it a little bit more of a fun experience. These other two problems are actually something that, act, that goes hand in hand. This is actually uh, one being there needs to be other ways of obtaining Lunar Coins and the other being that people actually purposely throw matches in order to gain faster Lunar Coins. And the reason why these go hand in hand is because Lunar Coins themselves aren't really easy to get. The only way you can actually get them are from two methods. Number one is doing the event. The second thing is through either winning or losing a game. You get more Lunar Coins through winning and you get half of that most of the time when losing the game, but there really isn't as much Lunar Coins you are given. The way I see this can actually be changed is if you allow winning to obtain a lot more Lunar Coins than losing, don't make it to where it's 50% if you lose the game. Make it a little bit like 10% if you lose the game and you, you get a, a little bit more of a higher Lunar Coin amount, maybe something like you know 50 Lunar Coins, 100 Lunar Coins. So that it makes it a little bit easier to upgrade some polymorphs and even purchase some of the crafting items that are within this event. The other thing that you can actually do to improve um, the amount of Lunar Coins you can get is by having objectives that normally are in the game to increase the amount of Lunar Coins you get during the end of the game. So for example, if you capture a point, you gain a certain amount of Lunar Coins. If you kill somebody, you get a certain amount of Lunar Coins. If you heal somebody, like, you know, give some support, get a certain amount of Lunar Coins. Capture a Spiral, you get a little bit more Lunar Coins, a lot more Lunar Coins than just capturing regular points. Maybe even if you go through Battle Chests, you get like a very small fraction of Lunar Coins, but still you get a little bit more Lunar Coins. Just by doing things that are within the event should have an effect as to how much Lunar Coins you gain. The more you do within the event, the more Lunar Coins you should receive. And the less you do for the event, the less Lunar Coins you should be receiving. But also, you know, still keep the fact that if you win, you get a certain amount of Lunar Coins regardless. That way, it could be a little bit easier for players who want to gain more Lunar Coins, be a little bit more of a team player and help others as much as needed and do what's required from you to win the game mode. So to end off my small discussion of the summer update for 2019, I want to talk about the last two things, which is the Spiral Showcase and the Scroll of Fortune. The Spiral Showcase is a free-to-play event where you gain some extra rewards by doing everyday things in Wizard 101. This includes uh, for pet training, crafting, fishing, and even more as to how you get those points. And this will run during the time where we don't have the Cathalon or even the Beast Moon Hunt event. For me, I think this is actually a really nice way for KI to give some really f nice free stuff to new players or just free to play players in general. But I feel like the quality of loot is pretty lackluster. For me, I think that there should be some improved uh, rewards such as more packs, like, you know, even like lore packs, ran like random or new packs. And it could even be something like mega reagent packs for like, because this would definitely help free to play players or new players. Uh, get some reagents that they probably have uh, issues getting you can even have something like the 100 rand mandarin kind of pack thing where you just get like some of these rare reagents that some wizards tend to struggle getting overall because of how rare they are that can help them with their crafting something that could just help them overall will be really nice i also think that the top tier should be at least like three packs uh it could be either the newest pack or even some random packs so that some free-to-play players have a chance to at least get something out of doing this event overall. The next thing will be the Scroll of Fortune, which essentially is a battle pass for Wizard 101, where points are dependent on the ones during the events of both the Decathlon and the Beast Moon Hunt events. One of my problems with this uh, Scroll of Fortune is that it's actually not crowns player friendly, which kind of sucks. For them, they have to pay 15k crowns instead of the 7.5 crowns that are for members and there's also some pretty decent prices like the benefit elixirs but most of the prices are lackluster for example one of the top tiers is literally a seven day mount 
that's literally one of the top prizes like i kid you not that's literally the top prize right there one of the top prizes there and it makes me really disappointed that you know most of this stuff that you get is pretty lackluster there's some where it's like oh you only get like a few snacks or you only get like a few reagents or a few cards it's it's kind of very lackluster in terms of the quality of the loot and you have to remember you know most players are probably going to be playing like 15k or even just seven and a half k crowns just for a battle pass and while this may not be a problem uh for games like you know fortnite because the game is free the only thing you have to pay for is skins which is not pay to win um uh, in this game there's lots of stuff in this game that's pay to win for one and not to mention you have to pay to play you can only play through Wizard City and not even through the whole Wizard City. You can only play through certain sections of Wizard City. And we still have like a good amount of worlds to play through that you have to just pay for. So the least that King's Isle can do in my opinion is definitely make these prizes better. And I just want to credit right now. Um, the person I got some of these ideas from are definitely from FM Sorcerer. He gave lots of really amazing ideas that I think could be really cool for this kind of battle pass to be a little bit better and more intriguing towards newer players and even current players so one of the things that i was thinking uh was a few things that they can actually do to improve this battle pass and before i even start with some of these uh, some of these i actually got from fm sorcery so i want to credit him for these things uh, because he gave some really awesome ideas for uh, KI to actually listen to and hopefully implement with this new uh, battle pass or just the scrolls of fortune but I'm calling it the battle pass because that's basically what it is and essentially I think one of the prizes should be you know lore packs that will allow players to have a chance to get lore spells which could definitely help them overall because it could essentially just prevent them from you know farming as much you know something that could give them some sort of benefit with their money another thing that i think could be really cool is that they add some special and unique gear sets uh at certain tiers for wizards to use for stitching i also would like to see some unique mounts because if you're gonna put mounts within you know this whole battle pass you should at least have some unique permanent mounts that you guys create yourselves brand new for wizards to flex on and something you know very unique for them to have a purpose to buy this thing i also think that there should be some unique and rare wands uh during you know this whole battle pass at certain points of your tiers it could be wands that are within the game that are just rare or it could be wands that are newly created by king's owl to give again people more reasons to buy this i also think other things they should add is some expand elixirs such as the friends bank and backpack elixirs because this can help a wizard with lots of things in terms of just carrying you know lots of really different things like it's just helpful overall and the last thing i will probably recommend is probably some unique emotes which you know again back to what i said before gives people more incentive to buy this battle pass because overall like i said it's very lackluster in the prizes and you could definitely tell that they didn't really think this through as to what exactly would intrigue players to actually buy this battle pass. And that concludes my video for Wizard 101 Summer 2019 update. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. It is a little bit of a longer video because I did want to give some suggestions and give some of the things a little bit more depth. Uh, but overall, I hope that you guys find this really informative. And I hope you guys are excited for the Summer 2019 update. I personally am not as excited, but I am definitely excited for the Beast Moon event. And hopefully Kings will actually take some of my suggestions and also many other people from the community's suggestions of what they need to do for some of these updates to improve them for the live realm or improve them for the future. But as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't. Also share this with your friends if you like. But as always... Remember to stay frenzy. Peace. Getting stronger.